So in an earlier video, we have talked about what we call normal stresses, which come about because we apply forces in a direction normal to the cross section of a specimen or a part. So for example, if I take this piece of chalk and I apply tensile load, I pull it, then the force of pulling or the tension is experienced by every cross section, which runs perpendicular to the axis or the longitudinal uh, side of this specimen, right? So it could be a tensile load or it could be compressive load, and they give rise to what we call normal stresses, okay? But then there is a second kind of stress that develops when you apply loading in a different way. So for example, imagine if this was actually carrot and you were trying to chop it with a, with a knife. In that case, the force that you apply from the knife to chop this carrot would not be perpendicular to the cross-sectional area of this piece of carrot, okay? It will be actually in the cross-section, so the force will be parallel to that cross-section. So if you have ever used a knife or a scissor or a garden shear or a wire cutter, at all times you are actually applying shear forces because those forces act in the plane of a particular cross-section. So all you have to do is look at the direction of the force with respect to a particular cross-section and that will tell you whether a force and a rising stress from that is a normal stress or a shear stress. So I'll show you another example. I have uh, a wire cutter over here. So when I take this wire cutter and I cut this wire, I'm actually applying a shear force in the cross section of this wire over here. Another example, I have two uh, beams. This is, these are you know, parts of your snappy XO kit. Um, and I have a C-clip over here. So this C-clip over here joins these two beams, as you can see. And if I apply a tension at the two ends, then clearly the two beams are in tension. So if I draw a free body diagram of this beam, you know, this part is being pulled in this direction, you will have the same force acting in the opposite direction. We know that because it's still in equilibrium. But if you look at the C-clips themselves, okay, so this is what the C-clips look like. So let me draw it. So the C-clips, you know, look something like this. This is our C-clip. So, and if you draw the free body of the C-clip itself, the force here is this way and the force here is this way, okay? And this force is actually being experienced by this cross-section over here. So if I draw this in 3D, because this has certain thickness, then it is being experienced by the cross-section that exists over here, right? So you make a slice over here. So imagine your force F was being applied by a knife and it was trying to slice it, then this force would be in this cross-sectional that I have just hashed over here or shaded, okay? And that's a shear force because this force is actually acting in the plane. Another example, I have three beams from Snappy XO and this is what we call an eye clip. This acts as a, as a hinge or a rotational joint. So I've got these two snapped together and then I have this one that is allowed to rotate as you can see. So if I pull it in this direction, so I'm applying tension on it, then this particular clip, which we call the eye clip, is experiencing a shear force on it because the tendency of this force would be to slice it in the cross-section of the clip itself. 